Art Days. Today we're going to be working with some air dry clay. And in your kit, you will have a nice ball of air dry clay. And it's so much fun to work with. It's clean and it's lightweight. It's easy to shape into anything you want. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an air dry fish. And along with that fish, we're also gonna make a picture that stands behind the fish to show the fish in its environment, which is the ocean. And we'll make a blue water with some decorations and some sea plants and sea life and things to go along with your fish. Okay, I'm ready to show you how to make this great fish. And if you can see in my example that I have here, this fish is colorful and very stylish. He has lots of pretty buttons. He has a texture to show the scales on the fish. And he has a nice shape to him. And in your kit, you're going to be getting a piece of paper with a fish that's drawn. And you're gonna shape your fish on top of this piece of paper. You really don't need anything except your piece of clay and this sheet of paper to make the shape of your fish. When it's all done, your fish is gonna be about one inch or maybe an inch and a quarter thick. So, you pick up your clay. And what I like to do is I look at, look at how my clay is supposed to be. I know it's gonna be a little bit wider down here where the fish's body is. It's also gonna come down a little bit toward the fish's face. It's going to squeeze in just a little more for the tail and then fan out for the fish tail. So I'm going to start pressing, pressing my clay. And I'm just gently pressing it. And I know that I've got to squeeze in for some, a little bit for the tail, so I'm squeezing in. And I'm gonna lay, as I do this, I'm gonna lay it on the paper a little bit, then pick it back up. And then I'm gonna start squeezing a little bit more to form the body of the fish. And what I'm actually doing is spreading this clay out with my fingers by pressing it and flattening it. And as I flatten it, it spreads out a little bit to make the shape of my fish. I'm gonna lay it back down just to see how I'm doing. And you can take your fish and start to squeeze it to fit inside the lines of your drawing that I made for you. This will help you use up all the clay that you have and get the results that you see right here. So I'm pressing down. And if you notice, I'm pressing it down, but it's gonna be flat on the other side. I don't want that. I want to turn it back over. And then I also want to round off, round off the sides of my fish. And then any cracks, or lines, you can take your finger and smooth those away. This clay is so easy to work with. And you can shape the back to make sure that both sides are equally rounded, but not totally flattened down. Okay, let's do it one more time, just to make sure. And that gives our fish a more rounded look. Check it again. And there you have it. Now I'm ready to show you how to decorate your fish. So we're going to, first thing we need to do is make, sh make sure our fish will stand up by itself. And the way we do that is you're gonna pick it up with your hands and gently tap it. Your clay is still nice and soft. 
tap it until you get a nice, now don't pound it, but tap it until you get a nice flat edge and that your fish will stand up by itself because you're gonna need it to stand up like the example I showed you. And then the fun part comes, we get to, we get to embed some buttons into the fish. So I'm gonna uh, pick out a button and all you have to do, the clay is so nice and soft, gently stick it in there. And then I put another small button on each side for the eyes. So that'll give you the direction for the face of your fish. And then it's really fun to make the fins start. You start to just getting creative with your colors. Whatever you want to do, this is your fish. You can make it as colorful as you want. I like to use the colorful buttons to make my fish really fancy. Here's one that could go on the side like a fin. So we'll definitely use that. Let it stick out a little bit. Okay. And we can go all the way around our fish. And then decorate the sides too by just sticking in the buttons. And if you stick them in so that they stand up a little bit on the sides, that's sort of the way their scales are. The scales will lay down flat, but they can they also have a little bit of a slant to them and it makes them look more scaly when they're this way. But it's up to you, however you want to de decorate your fish. I'm gonna show you also how to do some textures to make our fish look like it has some real scales. But I'm just pressing in these buttons wherever I want them to be. I'm picking out the colors I like the best, which is what I would like for you to do too when you design your fish. So when we go to actually make some scales, this is the only tool you need right here is a regular, this is a larger size paper clip. This one's fancy, it has some black and white, so I'll use this one. And I wanna show you how to make your scales. And the way you do that, you can use the narrow end, the narrow end of your clip, or you can turn around, you can use the wider end. And you just push it in. So what I'm using is this paper clip to press down gently into the fish to give him the characteristics of scales which is what most fish have. You can also lay your, your uh, paper clip on the side and you can make lines for the tail. And you can do this on both sides of your fish and that'll give you the texture and some of the familiar things that you often see on fish, especially in aquariums and wherever you might see fish, like maybe at the Living Museum and places like that. The finished side of this fish, and you'll do the same thing on the other side. And you also wanna make sure that your fish can still stand up by itself. So be sure that you keep that flat bottom so that he'll stand up by itself. So now we have our beautiful fish and we're going to make a, a nice little place for our fish to be on display. So what I have here is a piece of sturdy cardboard that's been folded in half and we're going to make the bottom of the ocean on this side and we're going to make 
the water and some fish, some uh, environment, ocean environment on this side. I'm gonna be using crayons and watercolor pencils. So I'm just gonna move this over for a minute. So this will be where the fish is actually on display. So I'm gonna show that on, as the bottom of the ocean. The bottom of the ocean is the way I think about it is a lot of sand. So I'm gonna get some colors out. And we're gonna be using two types of art materials today. We're gonna to be using the watercolor pencils and we're gonna be using some regular crayons. And the two of these types of materials together, when you use them, that's called a mixed media. So, and it really looks good when you, when you mix two types of art materials together. So I'm gonna get started at first with my watercolor pencil and I'm gonna start coloring in I'm not gonna cover the whole bottom of the paper with colored pencil. I'm gonna do like this. And I'm gonna leave some white spots. I'm gonna to need to press down a little bit on, on this pencil to really get that color out of it. And this is going to be painted with water. This is going to turn into paint when the wet paintbrush is applied to it. So this will melt away and be your background yellow color for your sand for the bottom of the ocean. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some different shades of colors that I might need for the bottom with my crayon. So I'm gonna just shade it in on the top. And in between some of these white spots, I'm gonna be putting in my crayon. This is an orange crayon that I'm using. And I'm filling in some of the white spots that I did not color with the pencil just to give it some variety and make it look like it's a little bit lumpy on the bottom, not totally smooth, but to give it some shadows and some depth. I'm also gonna do this a little bit with some brown, just to, because there's deeper, deeper parts of the ocean floor there's some that's not so shaded. There's some that's, that's raised up, some are lower. So this will make it look like there's some variations in the color of the ocean floor. And then I might even add a little bit more pencil just to deepen that yellow a little bit more. And then I'm gonna get my paintbrush ready. You're going to need a little bit of water and you're going to need a nice paintbrush so that you can turn this watercolor pencil into paint. I need to put some water on here and turn my yellow watercolor pencil into some beautiful paint. And you're going to love how this blends right in with the crayon. It even brings out some of the beauty of the crayon even more. Be sure, you don't have to flood it and always tap your brush, rinse, tap it a few times, just so that you don't flood your paper with water. We really don't need to do that. But a little bit of water goes a long way with these watercolor pencils. I just love them because they can do so much with them. Now you'll notice that when I paint over top of the crayon, the crayon gets a little bit brighter, but it doesn't rub away. And the reason for that is the crayon, crayons are made of a waxy material and that resists the water. So this is a technique that's also known as a watercolor resist or a crayon resist technique that you may have done in school with your art teacher. 
So this is also a really nice technique that you can use when you're working with your crayons. And if you happen to have a watercolor box or some watercolor pencils, you can combine them to do a crayon or a watercolor resist. They're a lot of fun to do. So I'm almost done here spreading this paint and you'll see how this has blended all together so nicely. And when I get done with this, I'm going to rinse my brush and then I'm gonna start planning for what I want to do up here for the ocean water. Now we're going to work on this side of the paper, which will be the water, the ocean water. And this will show our fish on the ocean floor. And then this part right here will be behind the fish just to show the water and a few other fish in our picture. This would be a great way to display your fish. So I'm gonna start off with my watercolor pencil one more time. And I'm going to start coloring in. And this is gonna be the, the blue water. And I'm gonna do that the same way as I did the sand. I'm gonna leave a few white spaces so that I have some room for my blue crayon that I'm going to use with this. And it doesn't hurt to put a little pressure on your watercolor pencil just to make sure that you get all of the color that you want on your paper. The lighter you press on these pencils, the lighter your color will, will be when it is wet. The darker you press on your paper with your pencil, the darker your results will be. I like to have my colors to be bright most of the time. And I'm going to leave some room for my crayon here, just like I did with the sand. Now I'm going to take my blue crayon and I'm going to add some blue into the areas where I left some white space. And I'm also going to put some green. I think some green would be pretty in there as well. Sometimes when I look out, when I'm at the beach and I look out at the ocean, it almost looks totally green. All right, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a couple of fish in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw those in with my crayon. I'm gonna have a red fish. This is the easy way to make a fish. I'll go ahead and color. Color him in. I think I'll make another fish too. I'm gonna make maybe a green one. I'll make a big, a nice green fish. Remember what I said about when you're coloring with your crayon and you're using your watercolors too, we'll be able to paint right over top of these, these fish and the, and the green and the red will stay right there. And 
need a darker color for the eye. Let's see. Uh, that's not it. This works good there for the... Let's see if I can get a darker color for this eye. Nope. I'll have to do that after a while. Okay, so let's get our water ready. Tap, tap, tap. And we're going to start smoothing out our beautiful ocean background. This is the ocean water I'm painting. You can go right over top of the fish. Some of those darker blues that I used with the crayon are staying and the watercolor pencil is dissolving into a smooth, pretty blue. bit more water. Don't scrub it too hard. Just a light touch is all you need. What I can do about this fish I want to put an eye on this red fish. I can get a crayon and make a, once this dries, I can get a crayon and touch that up after it's dry. Another cool thing you can do with these is while the paper's still wet, you can make some waves in the water. Sometimes you can dip that in the water too, that's fun. Look at that. And that gives you the illusion of waves moving or movement of the water, because the water is always moving. we're going to let this dry and then once it's dry you're going to have a beautiful display for your fancy clay fish yeah I have my fish I have my water I have my waves I'm almost done this is the time where you can after your page is dry if you want to add a little, a few more details to it, if you have a marker at home, you could go into your, into your page like this and outline your fish. Maybe make some, And this sort of just gives it a little more clarity, just a little more details, makes it brighter. You could also do the same thing with your crayons. But if you have a marker, you can always do that and add extra things to your, your picture. This is where you can get creative and make this picture special the way you want it to be. So here we have the finished project with your clay fish decorated with buttons. After your fish is totally dry, the way I got the color on mine is I used my watercolor set and I just painted it with some watercolors. The, uh, that really makes it look nice because the watercolor will sink into where you made the scales with the paper clip and make your scales really stand out. It also makes your fish look very fancy and really, really pretty. So this is the end of the project. I hope you enjoy working with this.